Okay, I have a case here. This is our iPhone 12 Pro Max, which it got a problem. The volume up, it can be pressed, but the down isn't. So up has no problem. And the mute button is working. Side button is working well. Only this button, okay, the lower button doesn't work. So let's see what's going on. I noticed the board has been repaired before. Hey, the shield is gone. We are not the first hand who repaired. So in this case, I don't think the flex is the problem. The power button, the volume button flex in here, the up down and the mute switch. Also the side button, they are all go to this connector. Okay, the first step is we measure the connector. Okay, I know this line is the power button. So he got 389 dial value. Okay. And the up down that should be in here. So we just need to refer to the ZXW or whatever software you have. Okay, so now we are looking at the Tel Pro Max, the board. As I say, this button is for the power button. That should have a dial value. In here it says 415. My multimeter is show 289 is normal. So I should get the similar reading for the other button, eh? All in here. This button is say IO volume down, okay? Button volume down. So this one is responsible for the volume down. So the other is working, I don't need to check. This one ringer, the mute. This one is a volume up. So I straight away to check this line. Okay, it is OL. Yep, this line is disconnected. I believe this line, one of the component before this line is broken. Okay, this one. It say FL10142, but as we know, the FL is not designed like this. They just name it whatever they think is suitable. Because this label FL is doesn't come from the Apple schematic. Okay? It is named by the third party. So actually this part is a EMI filter and a ESD protector. So the other side and to here they are disconnected, this part. It's quite common happen when we are repairing, you know. So from what I see, yep, I see there's a little dent in this area, okay, in this part. Yep, there's a crack on there. So this is why this line is disconnected. He should bring in the value to here. We have two options. First option is to replace it. Second option, if you want the easy money, we just jump it. So let's take this guy out first. Weapons activated. So as we can see, this little guy is damaged. So so assume I don't have the part. I will just jump it.
make sure the dial value. Okay, 336. Mm. Okay. They all should have a similar value. Okay. Now it is lower because it doesn't have the protection anymore. Okay. If you replace the whole component, I believe the value will be reaching 380. Okay, 382 in this line. 382. 382. So if you jump it like this, you lost the protection. Okay. If something happened in this line, okay, it will straight burn either the power IC, maybe something bigger. But it is the easy money that the power button will work. Okay, let's do the button test. Okay, down is working. Okay, no problem anymore. Up, down. So that's how you fix the button in a fast way, easy way. But it also means losing the protection. Okay, if any water damage come through, there will be a chance the shot the damage will go beyond this line the power IC will be affected or maybe the bigger thing eh? even the CPU can be affected so that's it for this video if you are the end user you must be thinking how much to fix it I see you just make a tiny wire like that it should be cheap right please give me the best price you know I really cannot quote you a best price before I check the phone I really need to look at the damage myself Remember what I say in previous video, many videos before, I always say having a same symptom doesn't mean you have a same problem. It is just coincidence, the video just now, the case I had, someone accidentally damaged the part. Maybe he was using the tweezer to open it like that way, accidentally cracked one of the components there. So case like this, it won't be expensive to repair. But sometimes we do have a complicated problem. It seems like it is just one button that is not working, but the problem can be complicated. Following video is to show you why some cases I will charge a lot higher. The following video is the iPhone 11. Let me show you the board design. You know, from iPhone 10 onward, the motherboard can be separate into the upper board and the lower board. Two sections. Some models, the button is connected to the lower board. Exactly in iPhone 11, the connector of here. We can see the power key. This is the power button. He is connecting to the lower board of here and go through the same component I have on earlier of the video. The line still need go back to the CPU. So on lower board here, there's no CPU. So he will be passing through this board connection of the frame, interposer, whatever you call it. I call it frame. And then he's back to the upper board here and then to the power IC. In the power IC, there will be another line back to the CPU. He will instruct the CPU to click the power button. So just because of design problem, it can be complicated. So the case I'm going to show you in the next one, of course, it is not the flex problem. When we are sure it is the motherboard problem, we will measure from the connector here. When I measure it, I see there's a value, nothing wrong. Uh, even this component is not cracked, nothing wrong. So I have no choice to dismantle the layer to check only the top board, whether this board is it still working. I just need to trigger this line to know whether the power button is it still working. So I found it is working, then the problem is on the lower board here. Guess what? Why not I just show you the video directly? Okay, I have a case here. This is an iPhone 11 that power button cannot be pressed. So after I dismantle the board, I found out this line. Okay. 441. The next one, 440. Actually, they are accidentally linked together. See, these two dots somehow, they are shot together. Okay, so these two dot, one of it is power button, this one. This one is NFC. Okay, so let's measure another board. 
the same location okay, here OL and here 440 if I touch them together OL they are not together so let's look at the ZXW okay from the power button here actually it goes to this and then to here this is the place I measure it's supposed to be OL in here but I get the value and these two dots they are somehow shot together let's confirm again yes so it will be either below this dot beneath the frame they are shot together okay. This is what I call the frame issue, right? These golden things. The whole frame is short. As you can see, I already have removed the IC, the NFC IC. And I'm going to measure the same dot, which is here and to here. Let's see, this dot belongs to here. But the next one, yep, even the next one, they are still short even after I remove the IC so I have two options to repair it one is I can transplant the IC the baseband CPU, Wi-Fi, NFC to the new board or I can just fix the specific dot okay, the dot that gets shot so I prefer to save the budget by fixing the specific dot Okay, this one is short to the power button so all I need to do is dig I cut it underneath the dot that connect to the frame and I manually jump from here go to there so I'll begin let me measure again they're still shot. Okay, I just keep digging. So then I will put UV to block the connection and put back the dot. And then jump to here. Okay, and then I put back the dot. you will have the value so I will check between the power button and the dot here ok here power button at 50 and here 0 now I'm gonna use the 0.01 mm the wire there are many signs and one of it is 0.02 so 0.01 which you can sit between the IC you still can install back the IC as you can see the wire is so thin Just to hold it, put the UV first. Okay, 
way it's not done yet we still need to disconnect this dot from the layer doing the same thing Okay, so, yep, the final part. Okay, it's done, so let's measure. Go to setting about There The NFC is working now Only left the face ID Alright, let's turn it off The pin that I repaired It should have the value of one sign Now this pin should have the value 449, 448 and this pin should be OL this is from the on off button yep now they are not connected to each other yep let's reboot it so as you can see the repair can be that complicated not only we need to dismantle the upper board and lower board we need to create a custom solution and even before that it takes times to locate the actual problem if to some of the technicians that might give up already Maybe that could you a very expensive price to replace the whole board. So now, as an end user, you should understand when I say I need time to check the phone, you give us the time. Not only me, the guys who can repair the motherboard, if they tell you they need time to check the board, give them the time. Because a real professional, they will check what's wrong with the motherboard first. Because in this point, I assume you already have local technician to check and then they told you it is a motherboard problem. So when you are looking for the motherboard specialist, you don't just show them the video and tell them, yeah, you just make the tiny jumper like this, my phone will be working. Please don't do that. This video is just to show you, it could be many reasons, it could be complicated. Sometimes our money is not that easy. And also to my own students, I need to show you, just because of the sandwich board, the design problem you might have such of issue is not happen on the power button hey it might be the line of the baseband remember i have taught you the measurement technique hey if you have absorbed my lesson very well you should know how to measure to locate this kind of problem very quickly 
So I guess that's it for this video and I see you on the next one. Bye.